Okay, our second drawing for this lesson, which is drawing objects and trying to capture the material that they're made out of, is going to be doing a paper bag. Our first with a bottle. Again, working with my ebony pencil, I've got a bag here, so I'm going to draw the paper bag. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is measure the bag. I want to get a sense of how wide it is versus how tall it is. So I'll put the tip of my pencil against the right side of the bag. I'll move my thumb up to the left. And then I'll take that measurement and measure the height of the bag. So the bag is one and a half times higher than it is wider. So this gives me an idea, right? So what I'm going to do is draw a line here. I'll make it, make it as long as my pencil, perhaps, so I have something to measure with. So I'm going to say that's how wide the bag is going to be in my drawing. And then I can say it's going to be one and a half times that for the height. So one and a half. So my bag is going to be this wide if it's going to be that tall. Or it's going to be that tall if it's going to be this wide. How does that sound? All right, so there's a rectangle that represents the height and the width of the bag. Now the bag, I see, as I look at it, there's the side of the bag versus the front of the bag. So what I want to do is figure out how much, how much, what's the proportion between those two? How much does this take up in my drawing versus the front of the bag? So I'll measure the side of the bag. I'm using that as a unit of measurement. Pencil against the right side, thumb against the left, and I'll see how many times that fits into the front. So there's the width of my bag, and that fits into the front of the bag twice because the front of the bag is angled away from me, therefore I don't see it. It's not as wide as it would normally be if it were facing me. So that means I'm going to divide this into thirds here, approximately. All right? And this little mark here, this is going to be the side of the bag on this section of my rectangle. This will be the front of the bag. I'm now going to hold my pencil against the bottom corner of the bag. I'm giving my eye a horizontal line against which I'm measuring the angles of this line that describes the bottom edge of the side of the bag versus this line, which is the bottom edge of the front of the bag. So my bag is actually in two-point perspective. I have a convex corner, right? The bag is coming out at me, but I'm not doing perspective, though I could, and if you want to, you could, but I'm just measuring the angle with my pencil doing a quick down and dirty measurement like that. And then the front of the bag is like this, okay? So there's the corner of my bag. Now I'm gonna hold my pencil here against the corner, this corner of the bag. As it goes up, it doesn't go straight up, it actually angles in because the top of the bag is actually more, a little more closed than the front of the, the bottom of the bag. So that line angles up. This edge of the bag also angles up as I measure it like so, and then the other side of the bag, this edge here, does the same thing again because the bag is more closed at the top than it is at the bottom. So there we go. Now I have an approximation of the shape of the bag from where I'm sitting. All right, now the next step is to perhaps put a little more detail in. I can measure the side of my bag and also measure the handles. So if my bag is that wide, the handles of the bag are just about as tall as the bag is wide. So that means if this is that wide, my bag handles are about that tall. And of course, they come up in the middle of this. So I can even draw an X to figure out where the middle of the bag is. I draw a line up through it, and my bag handles are going to be right here. The first bag handle is sort of leaning a little bit in, like that. And then the bag handle behind it kind of loops over from where I'm sitting, kind of like that. So there's my bag handles, okay? Now, the bag itself has some creases in it. I can measure the width of the bag again, and then measure the height of this versus the width of the bag. So if I measure the width of my bag, I'll measure the height of that crease there, that little triangle that I see. And it's not quite as tall as the bag is wide on the side, or the the width of the side of the bag. It's a little bit less by about a quarter. So if this is, let's say, three inches, let's say it's four inches, then this little thing would be three inches. So I'll measure that, measure up a little bit, right about there is that little triangle, like so. A little line comes up through the middle here and it angles in behind this crease here, like so, like so. Now there's also another crease right about here 
I can measure the width of my bag again and measure the height to that. It's just a little bit higher, it's about one and a half times higher than the width of the bag, this crease here. Again, I'm using the width of the bag here as a unit of measurement to measure other aspects of the bag. So if this again is this wide, that crease that we see there goes one and a half times here. It comes in about there and it angles down slightly like this. And then up again, once it gets past the fold, and then it comes across the front of the bag, angling up slightly like that. So I'm putting in these creases. That's what I see. Got my bag handles. The next thing I'm going to do is give my bag its local value. The background here is a dark. The foreground is light, but the bag is a brown bag. So I'm just going to scribble in some, take my ebony pencil, and scribble in some uh, value. Because it's a brown bag, it's not a white bag, it's not a black bag or something else. So I have to give my drawing the approximate value, its local value, of the brown that the bag is made out of, or the color of the bag, that brown paper that it's made out of. So I'm just scribbling in here. Right? You can see I'm kind of making a little bit of a mess, but that little bit of a mess will actually disappear beneath my other details. Look at the artist Andrew Wyatt. He does the same thing. He takes a wet, oily rag, puts some paint on it, washes it all over his canvas so it looks like a mess, and then he does a painting on top of it. And that wash that he puts on disappears. It becomes part of the painting, a beautiful part of the painting. He has these wonderful textures to the various elements that he's created in his in his paintings. Now, as I look at this, another way to divide this up is the side of the bag has also light on it, so this part of the bag is more in the shadow. So I'm going to come through here again and make the front of the bag darker than the side of the bag. Like this. So I'm taking this a step at a time. I'm going from the general to the specific. The general being, what's the most general description of that bag, which is a line? So once I describe the bag with a line, in a way you already know what I'm drawing from that. All I'm doing is adding more information and telling you more and more about the bag as I work on my drawing. First step was a line drawing, second giving it its local value, and the third will be to create the detail necessary to create the illusion of paper, okay? There we go. Now this is sitting on a little, I have a little box here with a cloth on it. I can add that in here, I can measure that. The little corner of that box is right about here, and it angles up and back. And if you think about perspective, these lines have a vanishing point somewhere. But I'm not going to worry about them for now, I'm just measuring them and putting them in here. But that's something else you can think about when you're drawing things. Think about the vanishing point. All right, there we go. So now I'm going to erase some of these lines we don't need, or I can leave them. Eventually I'm going to color over these. I'll probably, I could probably leave them. I can get rid of this one now and this one. So there's a drawing so far of my brown paper bag. So that's the beginning. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start putting more detail in here. Okay, but now my video is coming up to about nine minutes, so I'm going to stop this and continue with the second part two of drawing a paper bag.